The next is your competition. Now, who do you compete with, direct and indirect? Now, you need to take your blinders off and really give some respect to your competition. I remember my consultants used to come back when we were beaten by the competition and they were all crooks and they misrepresented and all of this stuff. The chances are we lost because we weren't able to give a compelling story or we were out presented. Sometimes we just take our competitors for granted and we're not that impressed. Now I, uh, I have a summer home up in the state of Maine. Anyone been in Maine before? It's like a foreign country up there. And one of my directors told me a great story that uh, makes this point. He said once there was a, a guy from Texas driving through Maine with a big Cadillac and bullhorns on, on his Cadillac. And he's driving through this road and he sees this old salty looking New Englander on the side of the road and he says, uh, say, is this your spread? And the guy from Maine goes, oh yeah. Well, up here we don't call it a spread, but I have 40 acres. Starts over there by that corner, comes all the way down here by this corner, over there by my boundary in the back, and over there by my house, got 40 acres. And the guy from Texas said, well, that's pretty impressive. That would be a pretty big spread in Texas, but you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. See, in Texas, my spread, my uh, farm is so big that when I get up in the morning and I get in my car, the sun is rising and I drive the entire length of my spread and by the time I get to the other end the sun is setting. Now you probably don't believe that do you? And the gentleman from Maine goes oh yeah I believe that I used to have a car like that once myself. <laughs> so take your competition seriously. The next is uh, to look at collaborators. Now you may know collaborators as centers of influence. How many of you have read uh, the best-selling book by Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point? For me, this is the area that really uh, improved my career. When I understood collaborators and how to work with collaborators. In the book he says, he calls these people mavens. And he said a maven is one who possesses knowledge or accumulates knowledge on a certain subject. We know people like this, the restaurants to go to, the buffets to go to, they read Consumer Magazine. He said, if the marketplace depends on information, the people with the information must be more important or be the most important people. So I started thinking about this and I think this is a good exercise. How many of you know how much the large box of cornflakes costs in the grocery store? Any guesses? Five, bucks. Five bucks. Three, three, four, four, four fifty, three twenty. Does anyone really know? I mean, somebody must know because what's preventing the grocery store chain from slapping a sticker on saying everyday low prices and keeping the five dollar price even though it's only $3.25 and saying it's on sale, sales will go up. Because there are mavens out there that know the price of cornflakes. So I started thinking about this and I said, who are the mavens on what I do? Every time I go to a company, and we had this conversation earlier, it's lawyers, it's accountants, it's actuaries. So I need to make sure these people know who I am and perceive me to be an expert in what I do. Wouldn't it be great if you went into a meeting and you said, who do you work with on ERISA issues as it relates to your retirement plans? And they go, oh, we work with Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher. Now, by any chance, do you work with David West, the practice leader? And they go, in fact, yes, we work with him. Mention my name to him. He knows me and my firm well. Think my credibility would go up? Develop a strategy where everyone knows who you are and, and you position yourself to be perceived as an expert. And the final one is context. In this industry, we've done really, really well at this with AALU and all of the, um, the proactive things. You need to be out in front. You need to understand what the issues are, the tax law changes, what happens after the election, and um, I think we've all been good. We need to be more like Wayne Gretzky. We need to skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is today.